Golf is hard. People don't quite get it. And maybe for good reason. To the observer, it's a welcoming concept. A lengthy walk outdoors, weaving your way through one architect's reconstruction of nature. A ball, a stick, a map, a desired path, some obstructions and hazards along the way, and at the end of it all, a cup with a flag in it. On the surface, it's basic, rather mundane if you ask a non-believer. But if you play along for an afternoon, you submerge yourself in the sport for four and a half hours, you walk 18 holes with 14 clubs on your back, well, you'll learn a lot about yourself. You'll learn after the chunks, the skulls, the tops, the slices, the pulls, the traps, the misreads, the frustration, the embarrassment, the shame, the nerves, the regret, the devastation. You'll wonder if everyone here is some sort of closet masochist. And then you'll ask, when's our next tea time? Golf is hard. Golf is really, really hard. And that's why it's worth playing. This is Nicholas James Oman, born December 2nd in Ottawa, Ontario. Nick is an athlete through and through. He grew up kayaking, running, and playing competitive soccer. That's us doing a super cool and very dope celebration when we were 15 years old. For this video, Nick is a guinea pig, but a valiant one at that. Welcoming to scrutiny and knowingly bringing on more embarrassment than triumph, we can all learn from his bravery. Nick is an aspiring golfer, always up for a range session, a round of mini putt, or the very rare scramble tournament, but he has never played a full 18 holes on his own. Until now. Do you remember uh, the night where this all became an idea? We were like six six or seven beers deep might have been like 1 a.m that kind of night um we were sitting around chatting as most things end up is usually back at the subject of golf well it all started with nick saying that if he really buckled down if he really buckled down he could be better than you after a year and you were like no way that's that's you know bs and then he said okay but i could probably be better than dave he thought that while well, he's never played golf before, that he could pick it up, master it, and beat us within five years. And so we argued for hours on hours about how wrong he was. Probably a little bit of like hubris from the fact that he's decent at probably other sports, although I can't, I can't say that directly. I've never seen him play anything, but like he looks like he'd probably be an all right athlete at a lot of things. Um, I think that translates for a lot of people until I would be, golf doesn't seem that hard. And then that's kind of the genesis of most debates that you have about golf is that it doesn't really seem that hard. <laughs> it doesn't seem that hard. And it kind of went from there where it's like, okay, what's a bad score? Um, I'm better than a bad score. Um, and I would put a bad score in like about 140, 150 for a first time golfer. I thought that breaking 120 would be feasible. Um, but you know, seeing your uh, your your look behind the camera there, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. If you had to give me a number right now, just don't worry about whether or not you're gonna. One thirty-five. One thirty-five. It might not be demonstrated when we go on Wednesday, but uh, I, I do consider myself athletic, and at the end of the day, this is just athletics. He has a chance, absolutely. Just like I have a chance to shoot seventy-two every time I go out there. That's the beauty of it. If I was betting, I would have I would have assumed that he'd shoot around 130. No, no chance in hell. Zero chance, actually. I think he's come in completely overconfident. Um, and the best thing that can happen to him is just be completely humbled. And <laughs> he'll start to rebuild himself from the ground up because that's literally what it requires to learn how to golf. I'd put him an honest, like, 165.
To prep for Judgment Day, Nick and I went to the local practice facility. I wanted to run through a few structural things and give him a couple of lessons in chipping and putting. We're essentially throwing him to the wolves here while sitting back and filming it all, so the least we could do is give him a few pointers. The thing with golf is that it's always a.、Uh, I've never tried to perfect anything like it in that effort does not translate necessarily to results. In fact, more effort and more. Mental analysis and all that kind of stuff can actually be worse for you sometimes. Golf has a certain, almost intangible extra element to it that is very difficult to put into words. But it really does take, I think, a synchronization and a synergy of intellectual, psychological strength with physical ability. And it's at the intersection of those two things that that creates a good golfer. And that's something that. You can't really appreciate it until you go out and do it. The mental fatigue that you experience is like no, no other sport that I've ever played. If you add it up, like physical mileage versus mental mileage, if you could do it, if, golf is 100% worse than any other sport that I've had because I've always been able to get myself into a game when it's like, okay, maybe I'm playing hockey and my hands aren't there or. Not really feeling sharp or whatever. You can always kind of expend more effort in a way that benefits your team. It's just you against yourself on a golf course. What's your response when I say margin of error in golf? I would say a tenth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. There's no margin of error. Golf is difficult for an endless amount of reasons, but it's not difficult for the same reasons for people at varying skill levels. Let me explain. For a low single-digit handicapper, you're not solely focused on making solid contact. That is a priority, but it's more about making the ball land in a specific spot with a specific trajectory and a specific shot shape. And with that expectation of precision, the room for error becomes far smaller. You didn't hit the shot that you wanted to. Okay. Was it your grip too strong, too weak? How was your ball position? Was your stance open? Was it closed? Smooth takeaway? Shaft pass parallel? Shoulder and hip turn? Weight transfer? Hands tight on the downswing? Did you turn through the ball? Was your head still? Did you hit the perfect shot? Now, for a beginner like our test subject Nick, he's not going to be thinking about even a quarter of those things. Simply getting the ball off the ground and keeping it in play for him—that is the goal. Don't be fooled by the apparent lack of complexity with this approach. Comparatively, it is equally, if not more, difficult than what an experienced player has to execute. Write a verbal letter to Nick right now with advice on what he should do. Forget everything you think you know. I don't. I don't really give a shit what you've been doing up until this point. Whatever preparations you think you've made, not nearly enough. You need to go into this first tee shot thinking I am going to get absolutely torn apart by the golf course and by the game. You need to go out there prepared to be stripped to your soul. You need everything that underpins your self-esteem. You need to be prepared for everything that underpins your self-esteem to be completely stripped away. This. May likely be one of the most difficult things, one of the most difficult experiences you've ever had in your entire life.、If、he's never been on a course before, and you're gonna make him play the black tees with stroke play rules. Yeah, my 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 one thing I would say to Nick is it's not going to go well, and、um, you need to be ready to feel really shitty about yourself. I just understand how difficult this is going to be. This is not going to be easy. Holy shit! What a shot! What a shot! <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? To achieve his goal and shoot under 140, Nick needs to be, on average, at the most, 3.72 strokes above par per hole. That means anything below a quadruple bogey is a friendly score. Having said that, 
consistency in golf is mainly fiction, and Nick's performance will not be an exception. There could be some solid holes from our test subject, but there will be blow-ups. The big picture is, at the end of the day, if Nick is 67 over par, that's good enough to break 140. As if it weren't already a steep enough hill to climb, not only is Nick being followed around by a camera on every single shot, but to make this a true test, a true experiment, he is being forced to play by the full rules of golf. That means counting every single stroke, taking the proper penalties, and putting out entirely. He's not expecting how emotional he's going to be when he's out there. He's not expecting the, um, the emotional aspect of golf. That feeling of you hit a bad shot and then another bad shot and another bad shot and you can't just pick up your ball and leave. Like you don't get to quit at any point. You have to play all 18 holes no matter how bad it's going. I think that it's difficult to comprehend how emotionally, mentally draining it is to do something for four straight hours. People don't understand that if you hit a bad shot, you can't just move on. You're stuck with what you've got and you've got to do it for three and a half more hours, two and a half more hours, whatever it might be. That's something that is, is almost unique to the world of golf, I think, um, in terms of, of other sports. Like if you're playing hockey, you make a bad play, the whistle goes, there's another face off, you've got a chance to do it again. But when you're playing golf, you're, you're out there all by yourself. He's not even close to prepared for just how shit he's going to feel about himself. People might not understand that walking a golf course is 11 or 12 kilometers of walking. And you're not on the sidewalk, right? Some of them, some of the elevation changes at Greensmere are 100 feet. And most golf bags are probably between 15 and 20 pounds, and you've got to carry that for four straight hours. So it, it's going to take a toll on people that aren't used to stuff like that. Oh, it's your head up, Jeff. Wow. His strongest asset may be emerging right now. The driver is becoming the club Nick feels most comfortable with. A smooth overall swing with a good transition means with a little focus. He has the ability to get in a good position off the tee, something many beginners struggle mightily with. Good putt. Three straight triple bogeys is no small feat for our test subject. He is learning on the fly, getting more comfortable with his swing. Remember, anything below a quad is welcomed with open arms.
After a hard-fought front nine, Nick is 38 over par and five strokes off the pace that he needs to break 140. That may not seem like the biggest deficit to overcome, but here at the Premier Course at Greensmere Golf and Country Club, the back nine is significantly harder. Tree lines on every hole, water to navigate, and much more drastically sloping greens than the front. Nick will have to battle if he wants a shot to come out on top. either 12 just because there's so many hazards around the green even if you go in one there's a chance you're going to go into another because 12 like the entire green is surrounded by red stake so let's say he chunks his tee shot which he's probably going to do he's then ha he has to play over the same hazard if you're like if you're really keeping him honest he's got to play over the same hazard till he gets onto the green so he could easily chuck three or four balls in that water and make like 12. Wow. Did it stay up? Garbage putting. Honestly, that was that was what the whole the whole day was, and, and it is very clear uh, where my game lacks. Sitting at 51 over par, following a third consecutive quad or worse on a par three, Nick needs to turn things around, dig himself out of a hole, gain some sort of momentum. So I started playing when I was about 12. And like most most 12 year olds, what appealed to me about the game was obviously the rush, the feeling of hitting a good shot and that sort of instant gratification of see it, execute it, feel the reward. And something I still struggle with in the game of golf today even is if I put together a stretch of three or four holes where I play really well, all of a sudden I don't want to play anymore because I don't want to f*** it up. So that's what, I've, that's what I struggled with at the start and that's what I struggle with still is if I put together a stretch of three or four holes, something in the back of my mind goes, okay, we, we did it today. We proved we could do it. And if we keep playing, we're going to prove that we can't do it. So that's, that's something I still really struggle with, is maintaining the same level of focus and the same level of belief in my ability to perform at a high level over, over that length of time. After a quintuple bogey on 15, Nick's back is up against the wall. He is 63 over par and needs to go four over in his final three holes to break 140. It's a tall task heading to number 16. The hardest hole on the course for a bad golfer is 16. For a lot of reasons. It's the hardest tee shot. From the blacks, 
the the left miss is tough. I don't know if he's a lefty or a righty. But there's forest all the way down the left hand side and it closes in very quickly to the green. You've got water left, you've got trees right. I mean it personally I double it all the time. But Nick has been here before. He's an athlete. He's been down a goal in the final minutes of a game. He's pushed through mental and physical pain when a race victory looks out of reach. He's experienced to come back, and he understands what it takes to fight through adversity. He needs a tee shot, he needs an approach, and he needs a putt. The stage is set. By the end of it, when you're standing over a ball, you're feeling a little bit exhausted mentally, physically. Like your game is just gonna, it's gonna deplete at a level that like you don't fully recognize when you're just standing at a range or playing a par three or whatever. That's just, it's, it doesn't translate. out there for five hours and you spend about 90 seconds hitting the ball and the rest of the time you're just thinking It's not like anything you've ever done before. A lot of people are tremendous athletes, a lot of really good soccer players that have no idea how to swing a golf club. You know, the first two years of learning how to golf is trying to figure out how to hit the ball. And once you hit the ball, well, how am I gonna hit the ball farther? How am I gonna hit it straighter? You're constantly making changes. You're constantly trying to work on something. You're never satisfied with what you've accomplished. There's a perfect balance in this game between statistic and emotion. Numbers are what we chase. To improve is to subtract, to triumph is to find or stumble upon the perfect equation. But the product of those numerical goals is always immeasurable. What you receive is elation, dejection, euphoria, and misery. Our man fought hard today. He was faced with a seemingly impossible task, and he truly never gave up. The number he was chasing is out of reach, for now. But what he received from the fight is a little affirmation, increased understanding, and endless intrigue. Golf is hard. People don't quite get it. But some will, if they want to. <laughs>